So to, to pick up on what Karina just said, we've been doing a lot of work in the public affairs and communication team to think about how we transform the user experience. So as Karina mentioned earlier, there's two big parts to that. One is the usability of our services, uh, so our website, our online systems. And the second part is improving our guidance material. And the work that we're doing is really more about how you might organise that guidance material that people like Al and Michelle and, and uh, Sharon are working on. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. Um, so from, from our side, to better understand what um, you, the user, wants from our systems, we set about, here's my clicker, we set about um, undertaking, oops, am I missing a slide here? No. Nope. We set about undertaking a usability review. So the usability review um, was completed in August 2016. So we did that in four parts. The first part was we undertook some online surveys. So I think many of you might have participated in those and thank you for those that did. We, um, when, as people visited the site, they were surveyed at the end about their visit, how easy it was to do what they wanted to do, whether they, they <coughs> excuse me, I'm having a hay fever moment. I just need to get some water. <coughs> Sorry. Um, whether so, um, and whether they were able to complete what they wanted to do at the time. The second part of that was some face-to-face -face interviews, and I think um, around 20 of you uh, participated in those. They were 90-minute interviews with a researcher where we'd set up um, an application, an, a simple application type, and we ask you to work through it um, to provide us feedback about the pain points as you went through each step of that process. So that was a pretty, a pretty detailed thing. We got some really good feedback out of that. The, th the third part of the uh, usability review was looking at accessibility, so understanding um, how well our website and our online services uh, were compliant with government expectations about usability for Australian government websites. And then the third aspect of the usability review was taking into account those the three first pieces of work we did and testing perhaps uh, a new way of looking at the way we arrange our websites, so what we call information architecture, so the way you navigate through the site. So the high level findings, and I'll, I'll start by saying there really weren't very many surprises, it's true to say. Uh, we found that many new users found aspects of our systems difficult. Experienced users told us, oh well, we always do it this way or we always do it that way. They, they found workarounds basically to figure out where to go next. New users also reported a lot of pain before they could start. They said, you know, there was a lot of head holding, a lot of phoning people up, a lot of questions before they could actually get going with their application. And the fourth one was that um, navigation was not intuitive. So people just didn't, they looked at the website or our online systems and they just, they just couldn't find things, they didn't know where to look for them. So, a little bit of detail on the key findings for the website. Um, people told us that application guidance was hard to locate or it felt like it was unavailable or insufficient. Missing was words some people used. Um, internal, internal terminology uh, caused confusion or people couldn't find a definition of the terminology so they weren't sure exactly what it meant. They'd look at the website and then they couldn't find the same thing on the portal or in the application form. Search functionality, people told us that was pretty frustrating. Uh, accessibility, generally, that was, that was a piece of good news. So for the website, our accessibility score was pretty high, which you'd probably expect given we only built it in 2014 and we attempted to build it the right way. Um, and users um, wanted to quickly find certain content. So there was actually some specific content types that people were looking for. So one thing people told us is, you know, they just wanted to go straight to information about, uh, to find PubCris or, you know, our chemicals database. And they sometimes thought they had to look for that a little bit too hard. 
For online services, um, quite similar kind of findings. People said they manipulated the system to get the item numbers they wanted, and I think other people have referred to that. Karina, you referred to that this morning. They found workflow issues. They said things were unclear. They didn't know what to do next. They kind of got stuck. Uh, there was some lack of awareness about the, some of the time-saving tools, like what the functionality our dashboard can offer. Um, there was also confusion and, again, some unclear terminology uh, on, on the um, online services side. And people were looking for some you know, better, you know, if you like, in-application guidance about um, what, what they were feeling when they were filling out the application form, like if they wondered where to find something, they, they were hoping to find more guidance in the actual form. Uh, there was a slightly lower score for accessibility for the online services, but overall it was, you know, it got a, a bit of a, a, quite a moderate score. So that was another piece of reasonable news. I suppose the other, the other thing worth mentioning on the online services too is that people did acknowledge that we had made significant efforts since implement implementation in 2014, and they felt that you know we were on the right track. So that was a good piece of feedback. So for next steps to transform the user experience, we're we're looking at a plan. We're really conscious, and I think um, other people have alluded to this as well, that there was a significant period of change with the 2014 uh, reform implementation. There was a fair bit of interface shock. People were looking for things on the website, looking to do the uh, online applications for the first time. So as Karina said before, it's really important that we do this right and that we do it in an orderly and uh, logical way so as not to cause you more pain than you've already experienced. <coughs> Oops. What, the <laughs> what happened? I didn't know you could do that. There we are. <laughs> yeah, that was a special areas marked for transformation trick. Um, okay, so the areas we've marked for transformation of the user experience are content quality and availability, searchability, uh, terminology, um, application lodgement pathways, which is work being done by others, but which would be reflected in better navigation on the website and in our online services, and also improvements to accessibility where possible. And I've just sort of pulled out a little quote there that I think kind of summed it up for a few people, which is that the current systems force users to take a path which is at odds with the natural development and lodgement process. And I think um, that's really something that you know we need to really hold tight when we're trying to improve the navigation of the website and the portal, but we really need to better mirror the processes that you go through as you're preparing an application. So on the table is a plan to transform the user experience. We're thinking about refining the home page to make it easier for you to find your way. Uh, by that I mean uh, we're looking at making it more audience focused so that you, people who are coming to the website can say, well, I'm this kind of person looking for this kind of information and making it easier to find as where you land. So clear overall design, navigation and information layout. We're considering a separate home page for industry or perhaps one for registrants, so like a one-stop shop for applicants where you could go and find everything you need about applications. So for example, if you're looking for a pathway to the top 20 kind of applications that Alan and Sharon, or now will talk about and Sharon has talked about, that you might be able to quickly find those there because that's what you told us in the in the face-to-face -face interviews that you were like, I just want to do a repack, how can I find that? Uh, another thing we're looking at is, as I mentioned earlier, application guidance which mirrors your processes um, and implementing Google search functionality. From a website and um, online services design perspective, we're looking at from inside the APVMA, we're looking at how we can better, better manage terminology across all our products, so from our applications, to our website, to our communications products, so that we, we define terms at the outset and that we um, provide developers and people working on our systems with a, with a common set of tools to better do that. And I suppose the third and really important thing is that we test the transformations with you to make sure that we are actually delivering things that you want. 
So if you like a quick win coming soon to the APBMA website, we think we can pretty easily implement um, Google as our search algorithm. algorithm. Uh, Google pretty much does it best. They've got the biggest, biggest and best set of algorithms ever. So we've had advice from some other agencies that that's a pretty easy thing to do. So we're hoping to do that in the next few months. So why are we doing all this? And this is a little bit of, um, sort of goes to what Karina and others have said this morning. Basically, by designing and improving our systems based on what you've told us and your, what your expectations are, will lead to greater efficiency and effectiveness and better use of our resources and then and therefore transform the user experience. So future state, what does it look like? So you can find the information you need to prepare a high quality application. High quality applications are easier and faster to, ask, uh, to assess, so we do, them, we do them faster. You need to telephone us less because you, can, because you can find what you need. We send out less notices because you've got all the information you, you, you need to send us. Uh, we take less calls and have more time to spend on application assessment. Time frame performance improves. So that's the, the future state. Any questions?